it's another big day at the small cabin in the woods. We have a generator. We finally got power out here. We got a Briggs and Stratton. 6500 watts so this entire video is going to be obviously sponsored by them they're bringing us the power they're bringing us the juice so we just had it delivered kevin's bringing it down here with the uh tractor and here it is the q6500 60 percent quieter than the traditional generator so this is going to be perfect for our needs i have mark coming out um, Grant is coming out. We have a bunch of people coming out to help. It's going to be a pretty productive day. We're trying to wire in for power. We probably won't get all the way done today. It'll be a couple day job. But the idea is to get this sucker up and running so we can run power tools out here. We can have lights. We can have all the amenities that you come to expect to make your life easier. And you can't have it without power. So thank you Briggs and Stratton for your Q6500. This thing, Q for quiet, right? 6,500, that's the number of watts. It's a lot of output for, for our needs, but they wanted to send us the best, so here it is. So let's get to work, let's get this wired in, and let's enjoy the amenities that we've come to really appreciate in our modern day life. There's no reason we need to rough it out here just because we're off grid. All right, so after you put the siding up, we noticed that there's quite a few gaps so what we're doing is going to get screw um, from the bottom up or from the inside out and then we're going to suck that space in any spaces that we can't we'll uh we'll put some spray foam in there but the screws doing a pretty good job so far so that just tightens it up seals it and uh gets rid of the draft and also we want to make sure that no animals or bugs can get up inside there so before we tie everything together here we're just going around with a screw uh screw gun we're going to suck in all the gaps here between the siding so the lap joints here we're gonna screw up through here and then tighten them up see Kevin's working away over there so we're gonna go through all the joints before we do anything after we get all this screwed together we'll put some tar paper down and then we can run our electrical and uh, that'll give us a, a barrier between the exterior and also stop a little bit of the airflow but also provide a, a gap we need between the exterior and the insulation we are going to be using rock wool we decided we decided we were going to do a slip straw at one point but then just do doing a little bit of research it just wasn't it just didn't make sense for us to do it so we are going to be using a uh, modern material for that it just it just makes sense it's it's such a small space it doesn't make a lot of sense to go through all the aggravation and um you know it's a couple hundred bucks for the insulation so we're just gonna slap it in there and be done with it but yeah we're, we're working today on getting rid of we're getting ready for electrical so we have to tie this all in first and then we can run our wires we have to build a little house outside to run the generator or to house the generator and that's going to supply electricity right to the, to the house is that a two inch screw inch and three quarter going on an angle our siding is three quarters of an inch thick so you can suck it in if you want to take a look over here this is a really good example of what we're doing right here if you can see that the gap there actually is coming whipping around here and we have had a really quite a bit of blowing snow so um this is why it's actually good to build in the winter time is because you can actually see there's a very good example of what what we're seeing so this is this is snow this is air penetrating the building so this moves right now so um what we're gonna do we're gonna go up on an angle suck it in And just like that that gap is closed so we're gonna we're buttoning up we're basically stitching all the lap siding together because you only when we did the lap siding you're only nailing at the top so you can't see anything and now we're actually screwing from the back so we're actually tying it all together um buttoning it up so to say so they'll be getting rid of all the gaps all the airflow and then like i said there's going to be tar paper that's going to separate our siding from our uh in insulation and then we're going to spray foam it we didn't do tar paper originally because uh we didn't do plywood so uh, if we had plywood on it, we could have put tar paper on there and it wouldn't have torn. Uh, the wind would have caught the tar paper and it would have been a giant sail. It would have just, it would have flown everywhere, it would have been broken. Time, timing was basically everything because we didn't have a, a big stretch of window to actually do it. Why do we not use plywood? Cost. Um, cost of plywood is just astronomical right now. I, I don't know if it's because of the wildfires in the summertime, but like cost of plywood, we're like, like 60 bucks a sheet and, and really labor's cheap and material is expensive. So my wife 
wife actually made me some chicken noodle soup, homemade. That's what's for lunch for me. Let's talk about foam. This is a can of spray foam. It's uh, good for minus five. There is a um, different type of foam for different types of weather. This one's minus five. It's currently about minus five outside. So we're gonna use this can of foam, low expansion. We're gonna seal up all the cracks. We can't um, physically put a barrier there. So we're gonna spray around the gaps and uh, make it more airtight. Every time we seal up a crack, it uh, makes it warmer in here. And right now it's, a lot of sweater, sweater weather in here. Um, it's not t-shirt weather yet, but we're gonna get there. T-shirt and shorts weather. Even got some gluten-free crackers. I don't eat gluten-free because it's a fad. I eat it because if I don't, I spend way too much time on the toilet. Bon appetit. Ooh, that's hot. What's this for? The internet told me to do it. <laughs> no, this is, uh, this will just prevent moisture from getting behind the insulation. And then we're gonna spray foam all the edges and seal this nicely tightly against the frame. It's omnidirectional vapor barrier? No, this is just tar paper. <laughs> <laughs> this is purely a non inorganic material that can get wet. It can dry, it can get wet, it can dry. It'll be here for a thousand years. No, it won't be here that long, but it, uh, it's designed to get wet. It goes under shingles normally, on roofs. Um, it'll serve our purpose well. Who doesn't like doing wallpaper? So the tar paper normally goes on the outside of a house on the uh, plywood on the exterior. Obviously we're retrofitting it because as Kevin explained earlier, it's just easier this way. Right? Well, I'm gonna get flack for that one. It's easier this way. It's, um, it's easier this way. It, it actually, in our situation, it's easier this way because we built it the way we did. It's nice and warm in here. We're not fighting wind. There's no wind. There's not paper whipping in your face. Well, last night it was really good, but then it rained and it snowed, so we it's kind of got wrecked, so now we have to slide down it a whole bunch of times.
we got a ton of people here. We have Mark, we have Grant, we have Don. Everybody's gonna be on full tilt. So Mark and I are gonna do the wiring on the inside. Kevin is gonna be outside with Grant and Don. They're gonna build the box for the generator. So between the two, we're gonna kinda meet up in the middle in the cabin with power. All right, dude, so what's the plan? So the plan is we're gonna run from the generator into a breaker box, uh, run a couple of breakers so that we can run some outlets, uh, three-way switch, and have some surface mount pot lights up top, some nice wall sconce lighting down below, and uh, kind of separate things so that uh, if you need to add or something later, you everything's kind of split up and that way you have uh, two circuits running in here. So are we, are we wanting for a battery too? I know we, we had talked about that, so I don't know if we're actually going to be doing that. Is that something of future consideration? Yeah, the, yeah future you consideration. To... You could have a little battery system out by the generator that's charging while the generator's running. So Don never got a proper introduction. This is Don. He's been helping out with the cabin. Uh, how do you know Don? Don? Don and I work together. Oh, okay. So that's pretty simple. Yeah. On renovation stuff, right? That's right. He's also a friend, so. There you go. I, so I, I bring him on adventures with me. I'm just introducing him now because people said you never introduced Don, so we missed a few characters in the show. Okay. So this Hello is Don. <laughs> so what are you doing out here? Uh, we're, we're just cleaning off an area. We're gonna build a little like a dog house, and it's gonna be storage for the uh, generator. So it's just gonna have a little place to live when it's uh, not in use. So some of keep it dry, keep it up out of the elements, uh, keep it safe. All right, have fun. Thanks. So you're Haley. Yeah. Your Grant's daughter. Yep. Yep. You're the fire expert. <laughs> <laughs> Today, anyway. What are you gonna cook? Marshmallows. Marshmallows? That sounds good. Did you bring anything else? Yeah. Yeah, what else? Uh, cookies covered in chocolate for s'mores. Oh, nice. So how are you making the fire? What are you putting on right now? Dry little sticks. Dry sticks, yeah. Little cedar branches. What's your name, dude? Tyler. Tyler, what are you eating? Chips. Chips? Because you can't wait for the rest of it? Yeah, because I'm hungry. Your fire's taking too long. Say, what's going on, everybody? Hurry up. What's going on there? Bring it up! There you go. Foundation to the generator hut. It's about level there, isn't it? Solid, safe, secure. That's what you're making? Yeah, so the third truss goes here, and the walls go on. Where does the generator go? It goes under, uh, underneath. There's walls still. <laughs> yeah, All right, put the just, walls on. Just make. We could build the walls without the roof first. Sheet it and everything, and then do the walls. Sure. Yeah, make life easy. Yeah. Don't have to work up high then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the roof. Yeah. What is it? It's uh, galvanized steel. Right. Where did it come from? It came from a man down the road. <laughs> I think it's an old woodshed. The, the idea, I think, with this with this one here, I think we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do the old school um, uh, chicken wire and moss and see if we can hide it because it's I don't know. I think it should blend in with the forest. Should it should look like that's something you wouldn't want to steal? That's right. Dry standing. Right? Yep, dry standing. Gonna fire this up? We're gonna try.
thing is frozen. He wants to put two switches at the door. One is going to run an outdoor light. One is going to run the pot lights for the upstairs. And then he wants another switch on the other wall. They're going to run the sconce lighting, one on each wall. So I just have to figure out the best way to get across to the light switch and then back using the least amount of wire. Simple. Simple. Simple and fun. So you may have already seen this on the internet. We're gonna build a small cabin in the woods out of pallet wood. Pallet wood? Yeah. Is that pallet? It's not pallet wood. It's all pallet wood. So these are all, these are, this is a pallet and these are, these are pallet pieces. This was uh, on a, a pole. Pole company uses these as, as stickers to hold the logs on the uh, transport trailer. So this is all basically skid wood. Is this a shout out to T Outdoors? The outdoor. He made a, did he make a skidwood happen? Yeah. Well, I didn't watch any of his videos. Um, we're gonna wing it, like we wing everything. We're gonna build a little doghouse. It'll be the doghouse out of skidwood, but it'll be a little cabin. So uh, we've got her somewhat shimmed up on the ground. We can't dig; the ground's completely frozen. So the idea in the springtime will be to come and take the forks on the tractor, just lift it up, and kind of make ourselves a base, probably out of some stones, rocks, or something like that, to keep it keep it steady. But right now because we're dealing with sub-zero temperatures and the ground is completely frozen we've got her somewhat leveled up so we can just kind of build something temporarily so this is another mark <laughs> you're in did you watch your video you were in the video once I think? yeah 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 you never got introduced no hi family friend roasting some wieners you got a daughter and a friend scout what's your friend's name <laughs> you had to, you had to, look at me. You had to check. They're not very good friends. <laughs> <laughs> like the cabin? Good idea. Great idea. Yeah. Quality, quality craftsmanship. Yeah, quality and out, content. and outdoor time that comes with it, right? That's right. Absolutely. That's the best part. Yep. Hang out, enjoy nature. Have a place to retreat for some reprieve if you want. Yeah. Yep. Love it. I think it's fantastic. Are you hungry for a hot dog? Somebody wants a hot dog. How's the slide look? Uh, a lot better. Yeah? I've been sliding a lot faster and going a lot farther. Alright, let me see. Okay, fill her in. She fits good.
Get in there. Yeah, we're adding plywood to the bottom. There, perfect. So looking at the back window here, that's the generator house getting constructed right now. So from there, we're gonna run our main feed line. We've got a breaker panel here will be up here. So the feed is gonna come up through the floor to the feed the box. That'll be the panel basically for the whole cabin. Just get rid of that here. That's gonna feed in to the first plug. And then from there, we're gonna have uh, two circuits probably feeding the rest. So you can see, basically it's all run plug to plug. So we have a plug here by, this is gonna be the eating area. And then we have another plug down here at the front door. So I don't know what this one's for. It's kind of just extra. Well, we may use it, we may not. And then this is a light switch. So we got a two gang. So we're gonna have the uh, outdoor light switch and the indoor light switch. And then up above there, future consideration, we have a plug up in the sky. That might be for a TV. That's kind of an afterthought. It may happen, it may not, we'll see. And then over here, we have another light switch. So you can picture climbing up here, up into the loft. We'll have uh, pot lights up here. I think a bunch, those will be buried up in some kind of bulkhead at the top. So uh, Mark's working on a big mess of stuff here because there's gonna be a wall sconce up top here and then another plug here where we can charge up or use an appliance if we want to like a toaster we're thinking maybe not a toaster but maybe a little bit too much draw or microwave probably not so mostly it's just the wall sconce there and then maybe you know if you need to charge a phone or something some kind of device and then up top just gonna grab the ladder we'll get set up in the top here and show you what's going on up there so the other switch will be just below here. So the idea is to have a bed on this side and a bed on this side. And so in between, you could have a little table just under the window, uh, you know, charge up things or have uh, another TV. So obviously I know what you're thinking about the TVs is like, we're gonna be watching TV out here, probably not, but I like watching movies. So I know the kids like watching movies. So if you invite them out at the end of the day, it's nice to sit down and watch a movie that you've got. Uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's a kind of like balancing your life out. So we live with gadgets. You have to adapt to them. It's not going to be like it's going to be sitting here watching cable TV nonstop. It's more like just to wind down and to keep the kids interested and in wanting to come out. So they want to sit down and have a break. That's cool. But most of the time it's going to be spent outside. So anyway, there'll be a light switch up here to switch off the uh, overhead lights. And then the reason we put two light switches on down the control up and the and the wall sconce is at the bottom because if anybody's sleeping up here in the in the loft area then we can turn the lights out on the top and then we still have lights down below and then we'll have exterior lights obviously for some you know late night outdoor activity so we want to have a fire out there or you come in late you want to keep the lights on so you can see the cabin through the forest all that kind of things and if you want to obviously you know you're successful on a hunt and you need to clean clean an animal and get it all ready to eat and you're going to want to be able to do that in the dark and to be honest most of the time that's exactly how it happens you get home late and you want to you're having to do that in the middle of the, in the middle of the dark is not fun so having some exterior lights is definitely something that we that we really need and then the next thing is we're going to have we're, we're planning ahead for battery power so we don't have battery power yet we're thinking we use a generator we can power up the battery and then we can run everything silently off the battery so then we don't have to listen to the generator running all the time, especially when you want it to be quiet at night. So we're working on that. That's a kind of work in progress. There's a little bit more deep, more involved in doing that, but it's not crazy with what we're doing. We just need to think about inverters and not blowing up the generator, not blowing up the inverter and all things like that. What's the idea behind the plastic? You put the plastic behind each box? It's for a uh, vapor barrier. Yeah, for airflow, right? Yeah, so when you put your insulation in, we fold this out, put the insulation in, and then this can be tucked around and taped onto the vapor barrier. Right, and that makes it seamless so you don't have all that air flowing behind the box, blowing in and freezing your butt off. It's nice to have this fire going now.
Put the fire out. Yep. Make sure there's no smoke coming out. Just heated up some leftovers. A Chinese food theme stir fry, and I forgot to throw any vegetables in it, so it's basically just chicken and rice. Really reminds me of uh, I actually used to do renovation with my brother. In your renovation, we had a business together a while ago. Never really my thing. But I did it, obviously, to pay the bills. I alluded to, well, people, anybody who asks, they usually answer. I have, um, after doing renovations, I got into rental property. Uh, back in 2001, I bought my first one. I was only 21 at the time. Bought it with student loan debt, right out of university. And I learned how to do that from being a student and paying rent for a long time. So I kind of figured there was probably a little bit of money in there. At the time, real estate prices were really depressed. That was kind of at the end of the last sort of bus cycle. It hasn't been a bus cycle in years in Canada anyway. We missed that whole 2009 debacle that the US got. We got a little bit of a dip there and then it just kept on trucking. But now people are in massive amounts of debt in Canada. There was never a correction. And so people just keep kept consuming, kept accumulating more debt. Um, I worked for somebody else before in, uh, in renovation too, at a university painting mostly. So I, I painted a lot and it was uh, not very fun work, but it, it was pretty easy. It was relaxing. If you didn't mind breathing latex paint all the time, the oil based was terrible. Didn't like that at all. But I paid my dues. Um, I did some roofing for a little bit. Uh, I was hard work flat roofing, hauling around 80 pound rolls of paper. It's not fun uh, on a hot roof. You know, I'm pretty pale. <laughs> Didn't agree with me too much. Uh, it was hard, hard work, really hard work. Um, but by the time I was 30, I had paid off everything and I knew if I did that, I knew if I could accomplish that, if I could pay everything back, I'd be okay. The reason being because my rent would pay um, a salary to me and I would still have overhead, of course, and uh, you know, property taxes and repairs and maintenance and there'd always be defaults on rent. Although thinking back or looking back now, I don't think anybody's ever stiffed me on rent because it was my job. I never wanted anybody to have the impression that I could, they could stiff me off rent on rent, so they never. They never got away with it. Some people tried and they weren't successful. Because I looked at it like a game. And whenever I play games, I like to um, use strategy, try to try, try to find little advantages if I could. Not uh, in a malicious way, but more in just a competitiveness way. And that comes back to you know the lessons I learned in hockey, where if you didn't stand your ground in hockey, you got pushed around, you suffered. So you always, you always shove back in hockey. If someone shoves you, you always shove back. So that's the lesson I learned from, from competitive sports. This is kind of a roundabout way just to say that <laughs> my meal here is really reminding me of what it was like to be on that job. But this is another mechanism of freedom. So the cabin build is, it's just a way of like inexpensively producing an escape not an escape, but just a, a place to recharge away from city life. 
is that I'm I'm totally not into c city life. I I don't feel comfortable. I mean, I could get along fine in the city. I just it's not my it's not my thing. I I like being in the woods. I like being away from people. But I don't detest people. I don't detest city life. I love city amenities. I would never choose to live off grid permanently. Uh, I just uh, I just feel it's it's un unnecessary amounts of, of suffering and doing without when the city life offers so many conveniences that you can't get when you're doing it all yourself. So yeah, it's a, it's about balance, right? I've I've talked about this many 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 times. You know, life's about balancing things. If you're if you have everything s straight, you're not running away from everything. You know, fix all the little facets of your life there's individual parts if, if you fix all those and you're not running away from something you're just running towards something so I don't really feel comfortable leaving my family when things are going badly I like I want to fix things and then I'm like okay this is working good now I can go off and do something to make myself better and then I can come back and, and be a good person all the time so it's like charging recharging your batteries and probably a lot of people can empathize with that position and maybe are suffering where they're lacking in certain re respects maybe some of their relationships or maybe in their job or maybe just not getting recharged by going out and doing things that they love hunting fishing or just exploring or traveling i mean it could be anything it doesn't have to be related to outside it doesn't have to be related to fishing or hunting it doesn't have to be anything like that if you recharge going out with your buddies playing poker um anything it can be it could be literally anything if that's not something that you're able to take advantage of maybe it's something you might want to look into um yeah it's not too late it's just and it doesn't have to be like the whole shebang it does it could be a part of it and you can just make small steps lots of people ask me how do i how do i do survival well it's just like you do one part of survival and then if that becomes easy to do the next part of survival it's the same thing with building the cabin it's like we knew all the little pieces. It's not like we're learning from scratch. We've done all the little pieces before. We don't think we've ever built, we've never built a building from scratch, you know, from the bottom up, but we've renovated pl plenty of people's mistakes and <laughs> fixed them. Leaky bathrooms, um, renovated kitchens, put flooring in, uh, drywall, painting, uh, you know, mudding, taping, some electrical, some plumbing. Uh, obviously you need to be a ticketed person for those things except for the plumbing you just need a permit but uh yeah we've done a lot of different things we've jacked houses up that were that were falling down put structural beams in like everything so between between me kevin and our and our friends like and, and the internet like if you don't know something you can look it up so that's how you get started on something and that's my uh i guess that's my food for thought for today so just thought I'd share that it, it's really started to remind me of these lunches anyway. Until we get this finished and I can start cooking proper meals, it really feels like it feels like I'm just on the on another renovation project. Except this is much better conditions obviously. More freedom and I'm the boss. Or we're the bosses. Our chickadee friends here lost the raccoon that was up in the tree that they're eating off of. So it's buried now in the snow, but they made a tunnel down into the snow to grab the fat off the raccoon so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to dig it up with the shovel and give them an easier time to put it back up in the tree if I can I don't know it's in there pretty good Use what you got. So the last piece is just a piece of valley flashing you would normally put in a roof. You know when the two roofs meet, the flashing in the middle. So it's uh, obviously another piece of uh, extra scrap stuff. Kevin said he's gonna 
cover this in chick that cover the roof in chicken wire and he's going to put moss on it to help it blend in more because we don't want this to stick out as much it's not really a feature of a cabin it's more more function than feature you could fit in it I could. Is, uh, we made a loft space up top there so we have some extra storage we just put a couple extra piece of plywood up there so we can throw in you know stuff up there or the raccoon can make its home up there or mice or whatever rats yeah the main generator will be down here and then we can just uh tunnel down below pipe um wire not a pipe and that'll go toward the cabin over there that's it I just need a door Now there it is, that looks like a pretty good fit. And then we have our start and we have our access panel here. We have ports for power, all set to go. Should probably give it one test run in its new home. Thankfully that's not a little mouse, it's actually a mole. And they don't make messes inside like mice do. <laughs> it's because it was hiding in the wood pile. I had to clean up all the wood pile and then figured it was spring, I guess. <laughs> Time to get out. Trying to keep the place tidy. It's a scrap pile, but it's also useful wood. And we built the entire shed generator shed basically from scrap stuff obviously we had to dig it out of the snow which is a pain in the butt um but it's kind of what you deal with in the canadian winter it's always snow so unless you we didn't have a plan for it at first because we didn't actually know the generator was coming and uh so we started looking around we knew we had some scrap left over and sure enough we got enough plenty enough to make it not good enough to make on the i'll uh, put on the main structure but plenty good enough for what we need for this little generator hut. It turned out pretty good. It looks like uh, Charlie Brown's house. <laughs> 100% or Snoopy's house, not Charlie Brown, Snoopy. 100% like Snoopy's house. Looking pretty good. The generator will go in there and be nice and safe. And then when we want power, all we have to do is start it up. An alternative to having a generator like this is using a portable battery, a deep cell um, marine type battery would work. For, and we may be supplementing uh, charging the battery with the generator itself so the generator is kind of always a mainstay we can always bring gas out here but we can also use a, uh, the deep cell battery so and we could switch it back and forth from the hut so we just put the battery in the hut connect the power to the cabin through the uh, the generator or the battery and we're set to go uh, one of those deep cell batteries i've heard uh, from talking with uh, a few different people that will last about a weekend, three days or four days, depending on use. We're gonna be using extremely low amounts of electricity, enough for uh, lights, basically just lighting. And we may use uh, electricity for some other gadgets. I mentioned having a TV out here, but uh, that's to be determined. And it'll only be for special occasions too. If like wanna come out here for extended periods of time, it's nice to throw a movie on and relax. In, in the long winters where you know, it gets dark at, you know, five, five or six o'clock and it's not light till like six the next day. In the summertime when it's not dark till nine, nine thirty, it's not so bad. But in the winter it gets pretty long and uh, obviously the winter gets pretty lonely too. So, but uh, the main thing will be to actually to have people out here and entertain people. And that way, you know, obviously you don't need a movie on in that case. But my, my family's out here, we like watching movies. So we might indulge in one just to, uh, to relax and that's what it's the whole cabin experience is really all about just relaxing oh yeah what's this thing I see a tree stump do you see the generator uh, ish yeah looks fake we superimpose this cabin here <laughs> this cabin's been superimposed it's 
green screen. There. Yeah. You can't you can't see the thing. You don't you're not gonna see it anyway. All you're gonna see is like shapes and shadows. It's not gonna be Ooh, right. Shapey shadow. I don't want the white. Alright, look at the lens for a second. Today we're gonna be putting together a Fido house. The Fido? What is it? Dog house? Snoopy. Snoopy house? Yeah. We're gonna be putting together a house for Snoopy. No, it's for the generator. We're getting power at the off grid cabin. Stick around, find out how we build this. Today we're gonna be building a dog house. We have a massive barking dog we're gonna put in this little outbuilding. No, it's for the generator. We're getting power for the off grid cabin. That's gonna be the shelter for the generator. We're getting power in the cabin today. We're gonna to be building some outbuildings today. This thing here we're gonna be putting together to house our generator so we can have power in our small cabin in the woods. Today we're gonna to be building a small shed for our power center for the small cabin. That's right, today we're getting power at the off-grid cabin. <laughs> I think it's missing a little bit of balance. I think it needs some pillars on the side and a wraparound porch. And that'll kind of balance it out. It really does look like Snoopy's house. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. But it's going to do the job. We're going to cover it up with moss uh, in the spring summer. And that'll help it blend in a little bit more. But it's, mas it's, mainly, it, it's, it's mainly just to cover up the generator. So that's going to serve its job. We've got to put a door on the front. And then we need a little bit of flashing uh, for the peak where the two roof uh, uh, sections meet. And the roof uh, we actually got from a neighbor who tore down a shed. So that's all reuse. And the um, trusses were actually reused as well. So there's uh, nothing we, the pallet was, pallet was uh, free as well. <clears throat> so everything that went into this building is all reuse, nothing new. The roof came from a neighbor who tore down a shed the siding was extra stuff that we had left over from the cabin. The pallet was obviously free, as were the two by fours that went into it. Plywood we got from the lumber store. They had it uh, leftover scrap pieces so that went in there. Um, turned out pretty good. So I can, lacking a little bit of balance, I think you need to uh, add a wraparound deck and whatnot, but we're gonna throw some moss on there in the spring and that roof will uh, blend in a little bit more. And it's, uh, just to house the generator. So that's all we need it for. And that's gonna run power from the generator uh, room back into the main cottage. And then we can fire it up whenever we want power. We'll bury a cable down into the cabin. And uh, as soon as we want power, we just give it a pull. We're set to go.